ground-based air defense systems in forms of IR missiles is a big threat for attack helicopters and for fighter jets alike. My name is Max Willman, previous a fighter pilot for the Swedish Air Force, and let's go. All right, so this is a clip I want to show you guys, and it's a uh, Russian helicopter here. It's about to be shot on by a uh, GBAD missile, a IR missile. Uh, this is from the Wagner Rebellion in uh, this Saturday, and this uh, helicopter is belonging to the Russian Armed Forces, uh, um, so not a coup maker, and it's shot on by the Wagner Group. We see uh, the helicopter will pop flares, <coughs> flares there, more flares, and the missile misses. So just one more time for us. Helicopter flying, we will soon see it drop flares. More flares, and the missile misses, just passes by. So a very close call for the helicopter crew, and we are looking at a probable KA-52 alligator. And for those of you who have uh, checked out my attack helicopter, uh, video. Uh, we talked a little bit about how they work and why it is difficult for uh, the ground forces to counter them. And this is uh, one way that they can counter them. Uh, and the, uh, as far as we have seen, the probable uh, shooter in this case is the SA-13. Uh, it's a uh, transport vector launcher and radar. A quick version here in Wikipedia. Uh, with four IR missiles here uh, at the top, with a small range uh, finding radar here on the top. Uh, so, when we talked about attack helicopters uh, and why they are so difficult to counter for uh, mechanized units, uh, it's normally uh, they are popping up very, very low level, and you need to have uh, your own uh, ground based air defense systems quite uh, at the front. So uh, using man pads, man portable air defense systems, shoulder launch, uh, like stinger missiles and so on, is not very feasible because then you would have infantry uh, outside of the uh, mechanized forces that were susceptible for artillery fire and so on. So you typically want some sort of uh, mobile system, uh, preferably tracked, if you're fi following along with infantry fighting vehicles and, and tanks. And the SA-13 is a derivative uh, um, evolution of the SA-9, uh, um, so it's uh, uh, Stella 1 and this one is called Stella 10. And what we see here is, is a 4 uh, IR launcher missile, IR missile launcher, that can follow along these mechanized uh, uh, troops that they uh, are protecting. Uh, and there's uh, several kinds of uh, missiles, uh, of course, uh, radar launch missiles, and these these are uh, IR missiles. And with IR missiles, the difficult thing for the jet or the attack helicopter in this case is that they are typically passive. Uh, they lock onto the uh, heat ex uh, exhaust of the helicopter or the jet fighter, and then they launch and, and shoot them down. And because there's no active emission from the missile's part, uh, it's just locking onto an uh, active signal from the helicopter, from the jet, so it's just following that. Uh, you don't get any heads up as a uh, as a pilot. Uh, you need to actually get a visual of the missile and then start using countermeasures or uh, maneuvers to avoid the missile. But typically it's a very, very short um, time from firing to impact. Uh, typically a couple of kilometers or a couple of miles uh, uh, reach from this missile, so it's, it's a matter of seconds. So you need to react very, very quickly and it can be very, very uh, difficult to do so. Of course, we have seen videos where you pop uh, flares preemptively, uh, sort of if you're flying low level, popping up, shooting, and then popping down. You can fire flares on the way up and down, and you probably have enough flares to do that, but you can't protect yourself by popping flares all throughout the flying sortie. Uh, as with this helicopter that we're, we're seeing in this clip, he can't be popping flares all the time because he would run out of, of, of flares. Uh, and flares uh, are the typical defense. Uh, for these kinds of of, uh, uh, of um, missile threat with IR missile threat, and what this is is basically uh, uh, fireworks <laughs> that you shoot. Uh, I think we have a picture here uh, down. This is from a C-130, but it uh, looks the same in basically everywhere. Uh, chaffs we can go into in another video, but flares typically uh, they get shot out uh, and uh, usually ignite when they come into contact with with air. So you shoot them and they get away from your aircraft or or helicopter. 
and because they have uh, they are burning actively burning they are sending out of course ir uh, yeah warmth and ir signals in in uh, in the air and the idea is that you want to create something that's more attractive for the missile to find than your own engine exhaust basically and i think that's what we're seeing in the uh, in the video of course, you can also have a radar warner. Uh, usually every type of fighter aircraft and, and fighter helicopter attack helicopter has that system. So you see if someone is actively uh, transmitting radar signals uh, towards you, looking for you, or, or actually uh, using radar to track you. Uh, that's quite, uh, quite normal. But, um, and then you can make... Uh, evasive actions and shoot, uh, shoot uh, chaffs in that case. But from iron missiles, you need something else. When do you launch the, the flares? Uh, of course, if you see someone shooting at you, then you can do it. But typically, the missile comes from behind. It's difficult to detect with your eyes. So then, uh, of course, there's countermeasures to the countermeasures. And in this case, uh, that's called the Missile Approach Warning System, MAVS, which you typically have on attack helicopters, uh, fighter jets, and military aircraft. Uh, and if you take a look at this C-130 here, as an example, uh, it has this MAV system. And what MAVs are, are uh, basically... Uh, several or one at least uh, detector ultraviolet detector and it picks up the exhaust uh, emission from uh, the booster uh, phase of the rocket of the of the gbad so whenever a missile is launched uh, these uh, systems detect the ultraviolet or ir signals from the missile's uh, rocket booster and it gives a warning to the pilot or actually it automatically deploys flares is the usual system so you save time by not having the pilot having to actually manually deploy anything instead you do automatic uh, deployment of flares and also of course some sort of, of light or or sound in the in the headphones uh, for the helicopter uh, pilot or the jet pilot so that they can make evasive action as well <coughs> excuse me and I think that's what we're seeing here. Of course, as we mentioned, the Strela, uh, Strela system here, the SA-13, it has this range-finding uh, radar. And why it has that is, of course, because uh, it's very difficult to uh, evaluate what distance uh, a moving air target is at. So you don't want to shoot missiles and aren't, uh, without, uh, yeah, outside of your uh, kinetic availability of the missile to hit it. Uh, you don't want to shoot something that's too far away. So uh, this radar gives it a better chance of having a high peak kill, a peak kill at the shot. So it could have happened that uh, array, it sent this uh, range uh, uh, finding radar and the helicopter detected that and then shot flares. But I think what's more, more likely is that this KA-52 helicopter here, uh, the alligator, had some sort of missile approach warning system that detected the launch of the missile and then started popping out flares according to an uh, automated uh, program. And in that case, uh, this case, uh, that was enough to save these uh, two uh, pilots, the, or the pilot and the uh, weapon system operator, uh, from uh, certain death. Uh, another factor that you need to take into account here is that it doesn't, it's not enough to just make the missile miss. You must make it miss by a, a little bit more than just a couple of uh, centimeters, because most uh, IR missiles or, or uh, ground-based air defense missiles for that, in that case, uh, they have some sort of proximity system, a proximity fuse, so either it's triggered by a direct hit in the aircraft or the helicopter, or it can uh, also be triggered by a proximity fuse. Uh, it's sort of a small radar that detects if the missile is close to a target. So even if the missile doesn't hit directly, if it just passes by, it uh, can detect that it's close and then it will detonate anyway and the shrapnel from the missile will uh, be able to hit uh, the target that it's aiming at anyway. And I think Looking at um, the video here, either the proximity fuse failed or the missile passed. Uh, it's, it's difficult to see in the video, but it looks like the missile passed by very, very close, but obviously close enough so that it didn't detonate. Could have been a problem with the proximity fuse or could have been that it was too far away to actually have a, uh, <coughs> a peak kill at all. Yeah, so that's what I'm uh, talking about today. Uh, I think I will end it there. If you want to support the channel, please give me a like and a subscription. <coughs> that helps a lot for the algorithm. And you have a coffee page here if you want to support me by buying me a coffee. You also have a link to my newsletter if you want to subscribe to that. But that's all for now. Uh, thank you for watching and until next time, fly safe.